Afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Hogs Media Podcast. We come to you following the Hogs winning Wednesday at Missouri, and then today coming up with a complete miserable performance against LSU at LSU. Yep. How do you feel about this week overall? You know, this team did the old bait and switch. You know, they played well against Kentucky. They played great against Mizzou until the last five minutes, uh, you know, and it was uh, it was on a lot of fronts. You know, it was energy. It was effort. It was scoring. It was assisting. It was taking care of the ball. Uh, obviously, against Mizzou, uh, we just really were able to dominate inside. Yeah. Both on rebounding and on scoring, you know, Graham and Mitchell both had a feast and uh yeah and so then we come in today against lsu who's an okay team but not anything special and we are back back to back to the old ways yeah. well maybe not in the old, just back to ourselves like that's who we are this year we are just continually showing i think what the mizzou game taught us was that mizzou is just really bad uh and um lsu showed us what a middle of the pack sec team looks like and that is not us no not even close not even close yeah we are definitely towards the bottom and it was <clears throat> never more clear than today's effort yeah yeah, it was it was rough. I mean, I think starting out, you know, the game there was just way too many turnovers, especially the first half. And just stupid um, turnovers. Like that. Stupid turnovers. I mean, Makai just, you know, it's like he got this great. It was either a rebound or a steal, and then just yeah. didn't even look and just threw it ahead to no one. Uh, and that was the play where him and Mus like the timeout was like two plays later, and and him and Mus were getting into were fighting. Um, which actually they a coach kind of clarified afterwards that what they were arguing about wasn't the the bad pass. It was on the next play, someone had rotated over to uh off of screen or something to pick up Baker, the seven foot white guy that was just draining threes on us. So I think Mark or Menafield or someone had like kind of rotated over and was guarding him. And when Makai recovered, he just basically like recovered into like double teaming that guy at the three-point line again and there was a wide open guy like five feet away that it's like dude if someone else rotated to pick up baker you need to rotate and pick up like whoever they left but instead mitchell just literally ran like and just bumped into his own guy and they were both standing there and then i think it was williams that they passed it to and he nailed a three um and that's what they were bickering about but uh, regardless, uh, and, and coach even said in the post game, like he, he, he actually kind of defended Mitchell. He was like, Mitchell was trying to do the right thing. You know, Baker had been hot nailing three pointers. So he was just trying to make sure that he recovered to Baker, but whatever. Uh, but the turnovers, man, I, it was, uh, yeah, just sloppy, you know? I mean, there was, like I said, that one play another time, like Lawson, you know, just dribbles to the baseline and just like throws it like down the baseline to no one like Graham was maybe on his way to that spot, but it was just so far, like so deep down, like there's no way to even like catch that ball. Um, yeah, just so many bad passes and getting our cookies. Yeah. You know, what do they call it when someone just like, like you're dribbling and they steal your cookies. <laughs> uh, they just say that's cookies. And then they still, cookies. Yeah. It's like you just reach your hand in the cookie yeah, jar. Just reaching your hand in the cookie jar. Those cookies. That was it. Was barbecue chicken for LSU today? Is another yeah. they, barbecue but, pork. Yes, the thing that makes me so mad with this team is if LSU they made a couple tough shots. Don't get me wrong, we had a hand up, but the majority of the threes they hit were wide freaking open. Wide open. Like every college team is gonna hit that, unless yeah. they're Mizzou. And Mizzou was terrible, yeah. but every well, other team is going to hit. Yeah, and and that's where, you know, like, if you're just watching the game, 
you know, casually, you know, you might just be like, well, the reason that guy got open was because, you know, this, the guy that was guarding the shooter was helping over here. But the thing is, if you are, if you're desperate, if you're playing with full enthusiasm, with full effort, you can sprint back to your guy. You know, you can run full speed and get back in time to at least contest the three or play smart. And, and, you know, like if you're, you know, if there's like two defenders over here, right. So there's like an offensive guy and a guy helps out and another one comes and a guy pops out over here, take an angle to recover that like cuts off the passing lane and then forces the guy to maybe go back door. But at least then you're not leaving a wide open three or at least like challenging the pass forcing, you know, you're, you're at least controlling a little bit determining a little bit of what the other team has to do but instead we just like do these like deep recoveries we don't do it at full sprint speed and so yeah they, they just hit the guy wide open and they ended up shooting 52 percent from three point on the game 12 of 23 like there's no way to win that game yeah no oh, and we made three threes they made 12 we went three, can't remember the exact number, but we hit three. And I was I was looking at the end of the game. I said, so they hit nine more threes. That's 27 points. How much are we down right now? 27 points. So even if we hit, I mean, five more, it's a 10-point game. And then if we hit freaking free throws, free throws make me so mad. Late, oh, man, I love Layden. Love Layden Blocker, but bro. The thing is, today he was point four, guard. Five, four for five, and then he goes on to miss five in a row. That's, That's the crazy row. part. He was shooting him good the first half. Then in the second half, I don't know if he got tired or what it was, but he was just breaking up. Breaking. It was just like, dude, you're a guard. Lawson missing at the end of the half, like off of a buzzer beater foul and it's like yeah oh and you just missed okay cool <laughs> like, that's like pivotal, like here's the thing at the end of the day like you know our, our free throw percentage wasn't abysmal it was 70 69.7 so we'll say 70 okay, percent we we left 10 points on the floor you're never going to shoot 100 percent on three or, or on free throws so let's say we make five of those up, right? That's only five points on the game, you know, to get us up to an 85% shooting. But th all of the ones that we missed... Situational. Situational. They were at those, like, turning points where it's like, okay, we're down eight, but we can, like, make two free throws and get it back to six, and we just missed both. And then LSU comes down and makes a shot, and it's now an 11-point game instead of... You know, it goes from eight to 11 instead of from five to eight, you know, or six to nine, you know, and then, yeah, end of half, right? Like we had started to, to gain a little bit of momentum back at the end of the half. Um, you know, the, the score was like, I mean, it was bad, but it was still at least within reach. 16 or something like that? I think, I, th I think we got, let me see, uh, at the end of the first. 15 at the half. Yeah, 15 at the half. So like, if you can make, uh, you know, make that free throw, you know, well, and Davenport make his Davenport make that three pointer that he shot, you know, wide open with one second left that Chandler got the rebound on. But it's like, it's in these pivotal moments, you know, like again, those three pointers, we don't need to make up all 10 of the ones that we missed, but it's like in that pivotal moment, if Davenport can hit that one right before half, make it a 12 point game going into the half and we have momentum, you know, a three point dagger going into halftime can like, really spill over into the second half. You get two possessions in a row, you know, like, but it's like, it's situational. And you, you, like, right when your team's starting to gain momentum, that's when we have the turnover. That's when we have the missed free throw. That's when we have the missed three point shot on good looks and good opportunities, you know, like chances, like I said, the Makai Mitchell, it's like you make this great defensive play and then just throw it right back away. And uh, I think blocker had a very similar play when we were like scrapping back in the second half. I think we had like, gone on like a little 6-0 run, you know, got it back to 14. And then we like made a good defensive play and then like threw it away again. And it was just like, guys, like we can't do that. I don't think we've realized, or I think this year has made us realize how good Anthony Black was last year and how good Ricky Council was like last year. True. Because 
we don't have anybody this year that can create besides Tremont Mark, and even he gets shut down sometimes. Those mm-hmm. two last year were pretty consistent, especially Anthony Black. Yeah. And it's, no, just, it's true. We just don't have scorers like today in today's game. They make their run, and we just get into holes that are too deep to dig ourselves out of. Like mm-hmm. it was seven to two. We called 16 timeout first half. And they just throw it. Instead yeah. of us coming back and making it a game, they just make it big and it gets down to 16 18. And there's no coming back from that with this year's team. Yeah. Yeah. We can't, like, we're, we're not a come from behind team at all. I mean, not this year. Very... That has been the formula the past years, I think. We we will fall behind 10 15 and then somehow claw ourselves back in and make it a game. But this year, no. Like, we, we make runs. But I was thinking about this today. We make runs, but it's to go from 20 to 14, and then the other team takes a timeout, and then it gets back up to 25. And then that's what we yeah. do all game long. It's never get it down to eight. We can never get it to single digits, ever. Yeah. We don't we yeah. just it, shooters. At six minutes or, – or, or sorry, at the beginning of the game – when there was 16 minutes and <laughs> say 14 seconds at 16, 14, it's a two to four game. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a one bucket game. 16, 14. Fast forward, there was a timeout uh, or, or a missed free throw at 11, 14. So five game minutes later from four to two, 23 to 10. They scored 19 points to R8 in in a five minute flurry and i guarantee about 12 of those was will baker (laughs) yeah yeah i mean freaking ball screen defense is pitiful we think no big guy can shoot and the problem is yeah our big guys can't shoot you're correct jalen and makai can't shoot worth a lick but other teams can yeah and yes he's a 25 percent three-point shooter i understand that people say well, he's not that good of a shooter, but I'm like, first of all, it's at home. Everybody shoots better at home. At home. And if you're wide open. Thank you. Like, I'm sure of his 25%, there's probably quite a few in there where, you know, there was at least moderately decent defense against him. Like, we left him so much space. So much space. Well, and then they- and then he got hot and he just feasted, man. I mean, he was making – he was 9 of 11. Like a ninety percent shooter, like he didn't make today. a three in someone's eye. Like it was a corner three, and he pulled it. Somebody's hand was right in his face. He, and the thing is, we can't let guys get hot like that. Every game we've had struggles all year long. Where we let guys get comfortable, and they just go off. The Stanford dude, the what's it, Memphis kid. Every team with Wade Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Wade Taylor, like almost every team has had a guy. Have a cool answer. Missouri doesn't have a guy or else. I mean, even number two from Missouri had a pretty good game. What's his name? Bates. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, they're terrible, a, but he still game. had a pretty good game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's the same thing, you know, that we've talked about all year. It's it's not just one thing. It's just all around, just out outmanned and outwitted. You know, like. That's our scheme, our strategies, our, our movement, our size, athleticism. You know, my, my wife was asking me at, at lunch, like after the game, like, do you think this is the players or do you think this is the coach? Obviously, it's both um, combination. I think, you know, obviously, like midseason, you know, like we know, like Mus has proven over the last five years, like he knows his X's and O's. He knows how to like run a run a team and run a strategy and and run a playbook um so at a certain point like yeah it's the players just need to execute and buy in to like their roles and actually like execute but it 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 really got me like pondering and i think a lot of it really just goes back to how we built the roster and you know if you look at our team we at Every year in the past, we have primarily just run, you know, a group of guys that are all about the same size, right? They're all about six, seven or six, eight, 
They could maybe play a two, maybe play a four, on occasion play a five, on a rare occasion play point, you know. But it's like, you know, you got Audis, Tony, and, you know, uh, Amude and uh, Justin Smith and, um, you know, like a lot of these guys, even like Trevin Brazil, right? Like he's kind of that like mold where it's like, yeah, he's like pretty flexible, pretty like, you know, lengthy and tall and that. But this year's roster, even like Anthony Black last year was really big for a point guard. You know, he was 6'7", oh, yeah. like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, this year, like we brought in so many smaller guys, L Ellis, Keon Menafield, Layden Blocker, uh, Caleb Battle, uh, Trevon Mark's a decent size. Um, but we're asking him to play like a three. And sometimes he's even like kind of in a four spot. Um, when Brazil's out and Makai or Jalen Graham is the only big man in, Mark's kind of running at a four position when we had like, Devo battle and blocker in or, you know, meta field blocker and Davenport, you know, whatever. So if he's trying to play that, like almost like pushing into a four position, he's small for that. Davenport is small for a four and even a three. And all the other guys I just listed are like small for a point guard or a shooting guard. And I think it's like, I think it's really catching up to us. I think Musselman's system is built for physicality it's built for like overwhelming teams with size and out physic physicality in them i don't know what that is but like we always like win on rebounding we win on like aggressive pressure defense and you can do that when you're like a more physically imposing force obviously you still need to have some speed and you need to have some skill but like most teams are not beating us like because they're just way more like talented they're just physical and they're they're like we're not putting pressure on them um and and then our guards are so small that when they get trapped and when they get pressed and when they get pressured or when they're coming off of like pick and roll screens they're not able to hit the open guy they're not able to make good passes out of it like anthony black could like Jalen tate could was that his right name was that his first name tate um yeah tate like you know even like jd note like you know, was taller than he looked for like a point guard. And now it's just all our guys are just like overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm missing a guy. Wow. I miss JD Note. Oh man. Dude, that he dude could ball. Buckets. He was like, he was like what Wade Taylor is for for AM. Just like just go out and freaking just take over games. It's it's just so sad to see like from the get go today we just had no chance. It just – you feel like there's no chance of us – as soon as they got to what you said, 23-10 at that under-12 timeout, like, well, this one's over. Past year teams were like, all right, we got time. We just need to settle in, get going. It's 11 a.m. start. And they were talking about that today on the broadcast. I'm like, no, we just – we're just bad this year. You yeah. could put us at freaking 7 o'clock at night. We probably would have done the same thing because we're just not very good. No, it's true. And they, they touched on that, at, you know, even in post game and Mus, he didn't make an excuse, but he, he was like, he, he did say like, yeah, like we played a late night game on Wednesday and then an early morning game on Saturday, you know? So he's like, that gives no rest and recovery time. Cause we're traveling back like super late Wednesday. So Thursday is just kind of a walkthrough and then we're traveling on Friday. So there's like, no preparation time, no rest time. Like, you know, he's like, that is a little like tough. You know, you would think if you're doing back-to-back -back road games and they're only two days apart instead of three, right? Cause the schedule kind of goes like Saturday to Tuesday, Saturday to Wednesday. So if you're having like the shorter gap and they're both away games, you would think they would at least try to make the second one at the end of the day, you know, 7 PM so that you give your guys, but no, like we we didn't get that. So it's, again, it's not an excuse. That's not why we lost, but it definitely is like, that's tough. You know, it's tough on our guys. Oh, it is. <clears throat> well, I just think we can't use that as an excuse. Not that you're no. saying that, but it definitely doesn't help. No, I agree with you. It definitely doesn't help the cause. I mean, yeah, you get back late Wednesday, Thursday's prepping, walk through, and then, yeah, yesterday you're just 
And then it, it is tough as a player to get up 11 games at 11. So you got to get to the arena. No time. Yeah. Like eight thirty, and then get your get taped, all that stuff. Get ready. And basketball games aren't meant to be in the morning. Football, no. but basketball is supposed to be a night event. But when you look at it from other people's, I mean, we're eleven and nine. They are eleven and eleven now. They were eleven and nine today. So it's like, well, who are you going to put at the eleven and a.m. game? You're not going to put some of these better teams. So let's put. Arkansas and LSU. Yeah. And LSU's yeah. arena was dead. There was no one. Dude, there. for real, like, there wasn't even a home court advantage today. Well, that was the thing. They were blowing us out, and it was dead silent in there. It was dead silent. No one cared. Everyone was, so, like, recovering from their Mardi Gras hangover the night before. Like, yeah. Like you would think, the alcohol her. might induce them to be even more wild today. But, no, they yeah. were <laughs> out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it it was uh just all around. I mean, do you think do you think coach has just like permanently given up on L Ellis? Zero so. minutes yeah. the last two games combined. Yeah, I think he's done. I don't even know now. I mean, there's when you're losing by 25 today and Dena J. Harris is getting 10 minutes, 11 minutes of play. That's your boy. That's your boy, Den and Jay. <laughs> no, but, but I, know, I know what you're saying. Like, he should not be playing over L. Ellis. And Battle didn't go back in the game. Dude, Battle, like, got nine minutes in the first half and never came back. That's the thing. I think, I think with, with Battle, a lot of it was his body language. Like, yeah, he he didn't get a couple – Exactly. He didn't get a couple of foul calls that he wanted. That's par for the course because he just drives into the middle of the lane recklessly and just like launches into a guy's body. And it's like, dude, that's not a foul. Like that might work against freaking Hofstra when we played him earlier in the year, but we're playing good teams now. Yeah. So then Battle just got his head down. He started getting scored on, like wasn't wasn't giving that effort and then once he sat on the bench like he like put his hoodie on and was just like sitting back like mad and pouty which i mean i get he's he wants to win he's a competitor but it's like dude you're you're not gonna get back in with like looking like that yeah you can either pout which i understand frustrated sometimes you just want to be like that. honestly on the bench you're just like i'm done but that you know, like you said you're not gonna go back in they're not gonna be yeah. like, okay you're pouting you're shut down all right but I don't know. I don't understand the LLS thing. I mean. Yeah. Today there was definitely some minutes to be given. Field didn't play great today. So I really don't know why LLS didn't even get a look, even when it was a blowout. I mean, you're saying, like you brought up, Dennis Jay's in. So obviously you don't have your main rotational bench guys in. It's kind of those yeah. later, like 10th, 11th, 12th guys getting minutes. So why not yeah. put LLS in and – whoever else that's what i didn't understand put the walk-ons in put everybody in it's a 27 point game like we're not coming back take tremont mark out of the game yeah i mean yeah I, I, maybe it's just his way of saying like you guys aren't gonna up, but figure this out like yeah. we need to keep playing through to like figure something out like, i got it it felt yeah, like it, i'm not like actually at this point say what it felt like it Wednesday, like we figured something out with the bigs and all that. Yeah. And then today, I think Makai is still, besides him flipping out and having that little spat, the first, he played harder. Like you saw in the second half, he was playing his butt off. He's yeah. been playing hard. Jalen Graham plays hard. And Chandler Lawson, despite not really being an offensive factor, does play hard. So our bigs have been playing better, but we just have no – the guards and bigs don't play good at the same time. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. No, it's true. It feels like two, like, feels like two different squads out there. It's like there's the big man yes. squad and the, the guard squad. And if, if we're going to the big men, then the guards like quit playing. And if we're going with the guards, the big guys quit playing. You know, and it's like, wait, y'all, this is a inside out, outside in game. Like, you should all be like, just like this, this, this exemplifies kind of the point that we're making. Like, 
three of the best assists tonight in the paint were from a big man to a big man. Like Jalen Graham had this like really great move and then he like dumped it to Mitchell and okay. Mitchell got a dunk. There was another play I think where Makai uh, had like a really good move and dumped it to Jalen Graham. Yeah. And I think there was another one where Makai got it to Chandler Lawson for an open dunk. I'm like, all of our bigs, like best like plays are coming off assists from other bigs. It's not our guards that are like running through them. It's just like, like that kind of exemplifies the point of like, this is not a cohesive team. No, they they just do not play well together. And I don't know what happened. We've talked about it every freaking week. They show glimpses. Duke game, mm-hmm. they played well. Purdue, they showed really good glimpses of being a good team that plays. And then we, Missouri, they showed it. And it's just, what happens? Like, where does it go? Like, does everybody say, all right, I want, I'm feeling it today. Yeah, and I know there might be some locker room drama. I mean, it's been huge this week. Yeah. I, I, I will say false. today, kind of speaking on the drama, but not as much. Today, like not against Mizzou. I didn't, I didn't, you know, obviously we didn't really feel the pain of Trevin Brazil being out against Mizzou. I'm not sure that we felt it against Kentucky because again, Mitchell and Graham and other guys like stepped up in that game too. Today, I think I really felt the pain of not having Brazil. Um, cause LSU has some like, you know, pretty lengthy tall, you know, like guys like Mike Williams, who is playing like a three, but he's like pretty tall for a three, obviously like Baker is, you know, that pick and pop, like seven, you know, six, 11, seven footer that maybe Brazil can like prevent some of those perimeter shots. Like he still would have gotten, you know, yeah. muscled up down low, but you know, like, or provided help or, you know, like. I think I think today was definitely a day where like, yeah, not having Brazil being able to do what he can do, add some length to the court, be a like solid four power forward, you know, even at times like against LSU's lineup. I mean, they have, again, some really tall lineups that they put in. Like we could have even done like a Mitchell Lawson Brazil, like, you know, thing for a couple minutes. I don't know, but it, I felt I felt it today. I don't know what the timetable for his return is. I don't know if Devo's coming back at all. I mean, there's been a lot of drama surrounding those two and Jalen Graham all this week, rumors. They've been posting memes about it, so I think it's all good. Yeah. it's And the thing is, Arkansas fans didn't even start it. You know, Arkansas fans can be toxic on Twitter and all that, but it was Missouri fans. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Missouri fans is what I've heard. That's really funny. That's uh, funny. Yeah. If if there is some sort of love triangle, which I don't think there is. I don't think uh, there is. Who cares? You know, like, the only reason to care is, like, if that actually led to Devo leaving the team. See, that's like, why I think some people will care is because that, that hurts the team, Devo leaving. Which, yeah. No one knows. He, I heard he's supposed to go back to his radio appearances. He does something on Thursdays. And he said he'll be back soon. So I don't know if it means he'll be back on the team or he's just going to say what happened. It's part of his NIL stuff is what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a weird mess. It's very confusing and no one really knows what's going on. Yeah. And the team's just gone silent on it. I think there's really – the. One of the bigger issues this year is we don't have one true leader. No. Like, no. no one's just said, like, it's been Devo in the past who's kind of been, like, that guy to, like, settle. Like, last year with the freshman, he was kind of that voice that was like, all right, let's settle down. Ricky Council was there. Those older guys stepped up. And Tremont might be there trying to do it, but I just don't know. I think Tremont tries to lead with his playing, you yeah. know, for sure. The vocal. Um, yeah, vocally, I'm not. I'm not sure. You know, like you gotta have how, one guy that's pretty vocal. Do what? You gotta have one guy that's pretty vocal. And... Yeah, and if 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 we get him back next year, you know, Menafield seems like that kind of guy that can like be a like in your face, like come on, like let's go, like vocal thing. Um, I actually think you know, 
give him give him another like year or two. But I think Layden Blocker will be a really good leader in like by his junior year. Um, because he already he 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 leads by example with his effort, right? I mean, he's always energy, he's always effort. He always like he keeps his head up, you know, or, or at least even if he's disappointed in himself, like he doesn't like let it turn him like it, yeah. yeah. Instead, he's like, crap, I just missed an open shot. I'm gonna make up for it on defense, you know, instead of that, oh, I just missed a shot. Dang, oh blah, you know, like so I I really like Walker's attitude, and I think you know he he seems like the type that like once he doesn't just feel like the new kid on the block, I think he'll be a really strong, like vocal leader. Thing with him that I really like is he went from getting good minutes to not playing at all to now starting again. And he never said a word. You never saw poor body language on the sideline, on the bench. He always just, he was just sitting over there. Mm -hmm. So I think that, and that's huge from a freshman because he's a big time freshman. It's not like, three star whatever he was a five star played at a big time high school and it's tough for those guys to not even play yeah he's kept his mouth shut just went to work played his butt off he can yeah. develop i mean his defense is already pretty damn good his mm-hmm. offensive game free throws just becoming a better shooter overall yeah be a key piece for us for sure and a leader like you said yeah yeah, he really does remind me a lot of Devo, an Arkansas kid, really? defensive specialist, like can get to the basket and like finish at the rim, you know, in ways that you're like, all right, like that's sweet. But then the outside shot is kind of like suspect. Um, There's not even like a mid-range guy like Devo was. Like he's that's true. He doesn't even have that. To the yeah. basket, yeah. Yeah. But I, I do like him and – I mean, do we touch on uh, the rumors going around about Muss? I mean, we can. We got a couple more minutes. Um, I don't know. I think I've heard a bunch of schools, or Minnesota, Arizona State. Minnesota, I've heard, but that makes no – like, why Minnesota? Who freaking Arkansas from Minnesota? Minnesota's an, a – like, no offense, Minnesota fans, but it's a nothing school basketball-wise. No, they haven't like, been good at basketball forever. Yeah. And like they, they don't have legacy. Like in the Big Ten, I mean, they're like not even top five in the pecking school. order, you know? Uh, and like money wise, NIL, like program, like Arkansas has one of the best like basketball and financial like programs in the nation. So I can't imagine Minnesota's a real thing. Um, PLA. People are talking in Louisville, Arizona State, and UCLA. Um, obviously, UCLA still has a coach, but they're having a rough season. So, you know, their fan base is grumbling and saying, like, maybe we get rid of our coach. And if UCLA does fire their coach this year, you know, Mus is from Southern California. You know, his mom lives in the San Diego area. So, like, for him, Makes sense. I think – I think he would really like to get back to Southern California and UCLA. I mean, obviously one of the bluest of blue bloods, greatest traditions in all of basketball, like history. If you're a UCLA coach and you perform well, you're going to end up, you know, going in, in record books and stuff. Um, so UCLA would definitely, I'm like, if they, if they do offer mustard, I'm like, yeah, okay. I get it. Um, Arizona state, Maybe again, that's because it's not too far away from his they mom. Have a good coach, though, I mean, Hurley's not a bad coach. They are on the fringe of making the tournament every year. I don't know if they're having a bad year this year. They're 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 not doing great. Um, you know, yeah, they're they're like middle middle bottom of the pack for for the pack ten, pack twelve, whatever it is, and they'll be obviously moving to divi- moving conferences next year. Um, but again, yeah, in terms of like program prestige and like it's not even career, like, if you have an Arkansas program that loves you and yeah. wants to keep you here, I don't know why you go to Arizona State. Like, obviously, if Arkansas was given in the boot and not renewing his contract and not like giving him resources, then yeah, maybe Arizona State's a better option. But like an Arkansas program that still is like really into you as a coach, like I think that's a better option. And then lastly, Louisville. I mean, I don't think there's any question yeah. that Louisville fire Kenny Payne oh, at the end of this season. Awesome. But like 
if I was coach Mus, you know, it's like, yeah, Louisville has tradition and it's definitely a basketball school, but like, do you want to take over a program that's like in the dumpster right now? Maybe, I don't know. Hey. I took over Arkansas when we were in the dumpster and made us relevant pretty quick. I just don't know. I don't, I don't know if he sees a bad year and he's like, all right, this is my time to get out and he leaves. Which doesn't make sense to me, you know, because it's like every year is a new year. And yeah, I mean, yeah. with the transfer portal, it's even more like that. Like back in the olden days, kind of when guys stayed longer, it's like, well, if I don't have a good group coming back, might as well yeah. go try somewhere new. But transfer portal, you're going to, especially with Coach Muss, he's going to get five to eight new guys probably. Yeah. Well, how many guys stay, but I don't see a ton. Well, we are, I think we lose seven or eight guys no matter what at the end of this year. We lost right? guys, Mitchell, Mitchell, Ellis. Mitchell, Graham, Devo, Ellis. I'm pretty sure Davin. Devo has a year. Devo has a year if he would like. He's off the team. He's done. He's not coming back. What's that, five? So the, Graham, Mitchell, Devo, I think Davenport, Ellis. I'm pretty sure Lawson, Chandler Lawson. I, I Six, don't think he has anymore. Um, Harris, seven. Denise Harris. Uh, and then um, Brazil's probably going to declare for the draft. So eight guys. So there's eight. Or like there's – you're opening up the full roster, you know, and then who That's knows what – opinion does about. transfer, and I think he probably would. Yeah, depends if he just loves Arkansas and wants to like stay with the school that he loves, or if he wants to like get more minutes. You know, so he's a non-COVID player, so he doesn't have a COVID year. Right, so he's already kind of sat the bench two years. Does he want to go to like an A state or some smaller D one school and actually play? Like Darian Ford's doing well at A state. These yeah. other guys are doing good at Arkansas Little Rock. It's like, well, yeah, I love the state and go play for a state. I know it's not the same, but you're gonna yeah. get an opportunity there. Yeah, yeah, could could be. I like. I hope he stays. I like Pinion, but I hope he stays too. But at the end of the day, from his perspective, kind of in his shoes, it's gonna be tough to look at it. Yeah, the writing. I think the writing is on the wall for what his career is gonna look like at Arkansas unless he just takes a massive step forward in the offseason. I think he's trying. He is getting faster and like slowly improving on defense, but he's mm -hmm. just not getting shots that a shooter needs. I don't know if yeah. it's a lack of getting open, lack of just being ready or getting kickouts. I don't know what it is, but he's just not hitting shots. Yeah. It's true. But but yeah, so all that say Musk can Musk can reload. I don't see, you know, why again, like I don't see why go to Louisville, A State, UCLA, I would see. That's the only one that's like, yeah, for sure. Like take that. One optimistic note on that that I have heard. Well, one, the reason it's a concern right now is because uh Musk's current contract, his buyout is really low. And that's why a lot of people are saying like Mus is a really attractive option for these other schools is because they could buy out his contract for like, I mean, it's pretty, it's like 2 million or something like that. Like it's not this crazy big buyout. I have her and, and we did renew him for like an additional five years after his second elite eight run. I will say uh, this could be some speculators out there saying that this is gamesmanship uh on the part of Mus's agent which is normal and every agent should like that's why they get paid is to improve contracts for their for their clients so some of it could be that this agent is even though this is a because this is a down year for Arkansas basketball he's maybe pushing the like coaching carousel a little bit harder to say hey Hunter even though this was a bad year for our guy Mus look at all these other schools that still really want him. You better go ahead and still pay him and get a better contract in place. So that's my hope is that it's just gamesmanship because it is a rough year that they're just positioning for us to still get a raise and still get like a better contract at the end of the 